Praise the Lord. Lord, close eyes for prayer. I greet God in heaven. How I worship and adore you today. We thank you because of the great ministry that you gave to Joshua. And the great ministry you've committed into our hands to take your people to a land of rest. A land of happiness, a land of joy, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. The promise you made unto Abraham, then to a signal to Jacob, then you reiterated that promise at the time of Moses. And now Moses is gone. And we have Joshua leading the army of the Lord and the people of God to lead them to the promised land. And now it comes to our turn that you have committed into our hands something serious, something remarkable, something wonderful to lead your people to the glorious land of heaven. Lord, we pray we'll be faithful to our calling in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, that the strength in the inner man that is necessary, the courage, the conviction that is necessary, the focus, the concentration that is necessary so we don't scatter our energy to various things and then eventually fail in the calling you have given us. Give us all the concentration needed in Jesus' name that, Lord, this work will prosper in our hands. And the people who are leading, one day, they'll have the joy of entering in into that land of promise in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord, in our experience. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank the Lord for the progress we're making. The progress we're making on the teaching of the word of God as the Lord is leading us. Leading Joshua. And leading us were the people of God in Israel. That as they came out of the wandering, we also come out of our wandering. And then we get now to the border. The border of the land of promise. Enough of just talking. Enough of just teaching. Enough of just sitting down to listen. Joshua had heard enough. Now it's time for Joshua to rise up and go from just receiving to giving. And go from just sitting down to learn to go out and do. That's why we come to this message now. Preparation and readiness. For the promised land. Preparation and readiness for the promised land. In Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people. Isn't it wonderful how Joshua gave a prompt obedience? Isn't, something, isn't it something great that Joshua responded immediately without delay? Without procrastination and without thinking it over, without trying to pray it through. He had, had enough time to pray it through at the time of his training. He had, had enough time to pray it through at the time of his discipleship. Now the word had come. Now the instruction had come. Now the commission had been renewed and repeated, reiterated again. And now he had been told once again, this is what you do. And the Lord had challenged him and said, arise and go. And the Lord had given the promise of every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you. And the Lord had assured him, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you everywhere. Go. 
go, be strong, and be very courageous. For unto these people you will divide the land. Have I not said to you, have I not commanded you, arise and go, be strong, and very courageous. Immediately after that challenge, immediately after that charge, immediately after that instruction given to him by the lord himself here is what he did immediately here is what he did promptly here is what he did without wasting time verse 10 then joshua commanded the officers of the people saying pass through the host and command the people he commanded the officers and the officers were to pass through the host and command the people. Do you see some order there? Do you see God speaks to the leader, Joshua? And Joshua speaks to the officers. And the officers one by one in their own jurisdiction in their own area of ministry, they go to talk to the people. It's just like what God has given us. There's a general superintendent. And the Lord gives the vision. The commission. The what you do. The duty. The responsibility. Gives it to the general superintendent. And then he has all these national overseers. The officers. And he has all these state overseers. The officers. And then what is given to them without taking away from it, without adding to it, they go to give the same thing to the people that are under them. They go to give to the region overseers, the officers. And then the region overseers, without taking anything away, without adding their own thoughts, their own ideas, their own designs, their own feeling without adding anything without taking anything away is too quick is too fast is too soon why should it be now without taking anything away they also go to give to the people under their leadership and then eventually the whole people they hear that's the way that's the way the Lord has always done it. And that's the way he's still doing it. He says, I am God. I change not. And so Joshua told the officers, he said, this is what you do. And then the officers went and told the people, prepare you victors, preparation, prepare, get ready. And you know, sometimes when somebody has been in the wilderness for 40 years, when somebody has, it, they're used to walking, walking around, walking around, merry go round for 40 years. When you are used to the comfort zone, it's very difficult for you to rise up and do that with enthusiasm and do that with real excitement and go on from the comfort zone from what you are used to for 40 years and go to the conflict zone. And go into the battlefield and go into the place where you will meet the Anakims who are talking about. You'll meet the giants who are talking about. But he told them the time must now come. And as the time must now come, time for action. Time for the forward movement. Time to rise up and be obedient to the calling of the Lord. Time to take the challenge to the doorstep of the enemy. Don't wait for them to come and meet you. Hey, don't wait and say, okay, when the enemies come, I'll take them on. Don't wait for them to come. Don't wait for the Canaanites to come and challenge you. Don't wait for the king of Jericho to come and challenge you. Go to him at his doorstep. And now prepare you victuals. And then it says in that verse 11. For within three days. 40 years have gone. Now within three days. Ye shall pass over this Jordan. To go in to possess the land. Which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. For them the time had now come. To mobilize God's people. 
to cross over Jordan and to march into the promised land. We're going in. I said we're going in. The army of the Lord is coming and nothing can stop this army. The people of God, the evangelists, the soul winners, and the teachers, and the pastors, and the overseers, they are coming. And nothing can stop this team. We're going to do it. With stress, with courage, with conviction, with power, with vision. With a kind of top-mindedness, we're following the captain of our salvation. And we're going to move on and move through until it is done in Jesus' name. Joshua was to prepare the people to move into their rest. The edge of the wilderness wandering became the beginning of the rest in the promised land. The edge became the beginning. Don't you understand? The end of January becomes the beginning of February. The end of one year becomes the beginning of another year. And the years of just roaming about, the end of the wandering becomes the beginning of settling down, of conquering the land, and moving into the possession, into the promise that the Almighty God had given. How many years ago now? Hundreds of years. He gave that to Abraham, and then to Isaac, and then to Jacob, and he gave it at the time of Moses, and then to the children of Israel, living in Egypt, and now he has come to tell the people that were at the very verge, at the very edge of the wilderness, wandering to move in into the possession of the Lord. And here comes our own chance. Here comes our own time. We're moving in. You know, a time comes when we say, enough of that. Now we need to begin this. You know, it's only children who do not know when to stop playing and start walking it's only babes in the christ in christian warfare babes in the things of the lord who do not know when to stop the wandering when to stop the playing when to stop all the games and then begin the work, the work of the day, the assignment of our time, the great commission that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, gave to the church. Enough of that so we can begin this. Enough of the wanderings so we can begin to enter into the rest of the promised land. Christ's ministers today must know when to begin a new thing and allow the old to pass, to evaporate. And so now we come to that time of preparation, preparing the people of God to enter in, preparing the people of God to enter in into the promised land. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, preparation to possess the promised land. Preparation to possess the promised land. Number two, the privilege of partaking in the promised rest. The privilege of partaking in the promised rest. And then number three, the pledge of passing over the pledge of passing over with God's people. I come to number one, preparation to possess the promised land. Let's come back to Joshua chapter one. In Joshua chapter one, I'm reading from verse 10. Then Joshua commanded. Don't you like that language? That's the language of the army. That's the language of the military. That's the language of the people that are going to possess the land. Then Joshua suggested no. The captain of an army does not make suggestion. He makes a decree, a command. Then Joshua advised the people. No. Joshua did not give advice. 
Then Joshua said, everybody, can you listen to my opinion? No, Joshua, the captain of the army never gave an opinion. Then Joshua commanded leaders of the church, stop being apologetic. Once you know what the Lord has said, once you know this is the word of the Lord, you stand up and you declare that word of the Lord without any apology, without sitting back to say, brethren, what do you think? Wouldn't it be a good idea if we rose up and left this wilderness and then went on? A leader doesn't talk that way, friend. A commander in an army doesn't talk that way. A pastor that knows the doctrine, that knows the word of God, he doesn't talk that way. You are to speak with all authority. And do not allow anyone to contradict that inspired authority of the word. You rebuke, you reprove with all authority in season and out of season. Preach the word, not apologetically. Here comes Joshua. He by whom Jehovah will save. That's how they talk. The people that are going to be used of God to deliver the children of Israel, the people of God, out of the wilderness wandering and bring them into the promised land. They speak with certainty, with assurance, with confidence, with courage. And so Joshua commanded the officers, commanded the officers, you know, if we're going to actually win, there must be that interaction, that cooperation between the leader up there and the officers down here. One Satan can break our ranks. And once Satan can make the officers not to be united with the captain, with Joshua, he doesn't even need to send the Canaanites to defeat us. We're defeated already. It is the unity that brings the victory. And they work together as a team. That word team, T-E-A-M together that's for t everyone that's for e accomplishes that's for a more that's m together a team together everyone accomplishes more it is that's why there was unity in the early church they were all with one accord it was a team a formidable team an irresistible team, an unconquerable team, and then, and they achieved. When you forget our goal, when you forget what we are to accomplish, when you forget our dream, when you forget our calling, then there will be no unity anymore, no coherence anymore between Joshua and the officers. But you know, if we're going to win together, everyone accomplishes more. If we're going to win as a team, Joshua will talk to the people and sorry, to the officers. And the officers will talk to the people. And then it says in verse 11, pass through the host. And command the people. And command the people. Joshua commanded them. And they are to go to the people to command them. That's leadership. How many times, you know, sometimes we come for our planning meeting. And then as we come for our planning meeting, we have our officers that came. And here I stand as Joshua, as the captain, as the general superintendent. And then we take decisions and I say, this is what you do. And then the officer will go back to his church in the region and say, we're just coming back from the headquarters. And they said that this is what you do. They, give me, they didn't give me a chance to raise up my hand and tell them, in our region, we have another challenge. We have a different opinion. But, well, 
they told us at the headquarters to tell you this. <laughs> there you are. You'll not be effective. The anointing of God will not be upon your life because you you are breaking the rank. You go back and you give a command. Here we are, church. We're deep alive. And as deep alive, we're coming from the headquarters. And the general superintendent said, as he was led by the Spirit of God, inspired by the Spirit of God, this is where the church is going. This is the vision for this year. This is the goal for this year. This is what we're to carry out for this year. Joshua has spoken to the officers, and the officers are to go and command the people. If they're not going to be apologetic before the people. What are we going to do? Armies never win that way. In verse 11, pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals. He put the words in their mouth. This is what we have to tell them. And then he said, For, we, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan. To go in to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess it. Have you noticed three things in, in this? Joshua number one is immediate obedience. The Lord had spoken to him, and then number one, what we see is immediate obedience. Are you like that? Whenever we come together here and we have our congress. And we take decisions during the planning meeting at the end of the congress. And we say, this is what we're to do. This is what we're to do. This is where we're going. And this is what we're going to accomplish in this coming year. Do you go back that very Saturday when we end? And then on Sunday, you begin to put things in place. And you begin to draw action plan. Immediate obedience. That's Joshua. That should be you. Number two is instructive orders it's instructive orders you cannot do it alone you are doing it with other people but to keep a working relationship with those other people is orders is command was instructive and that's what you have to do you give instruction by ordering the people by talking to the people by commanding the people by challenging the people number three is inspirational oversight is inspirational oversight a leader must know how to inspire people how to make people enthusiastic how to make people say yes we're going we'll do it together a, a leader must be able to get the lethargy out of the people the sleeping sickness out of the people the slumbering out of the people a leader must be able to come say and be able to say i have a goal i have a vision there's somewhere we're going and everybody will be going there together and then you have this inspirational oversight upon the people joshua commanded the officers and then the people also commanded uh, the officers commanded the people this is a long awaited command we've been waiting for this enough of wilderness wandering we're eager to move on and we're eager to move in and that's exactly what happened to them let's look at joshua chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 joshua 3 from verse 1 and joshua rose early in the morning that's how he always did it always did it he rose early in the morning the morning determines the day if you rise up in the morning and the moment you wake up in the morning you say what am i doing today of course you should even have known that yesterday the previous day and then these are the things i'm to do what are you to do you know where we're going you know the goal you know the intention you know the vision and therefore this is the day and today must contribute to the overall vision you know you don't just rise up in the day and say this is what i'm going to do you say that is where we're going and today i must take a step a step another step that will move me in the direction of the final destination you write down if i'm going to get to that final destination this is what has been done and this is what needs to be done and then you put them down then you ask yourself 
Among all these things that I put down as a leader, which one will others do? The ones I can delegate. There are things to delegate. And then which are the ones that I must do? That if I don't do it, nobody else will be able to do it. You put everything down. And then you order them. The other priority, A, B, and C. This is the most important. And this is the next one on the line. And this is the next one on the line. How do I determine what's the most important? The way you determine what's the most important is the key assignment. What's the key assignment? Here we are. We want to come into the offices here. And we're coming from outside. And then we have a lot of work for all the people to do. And then you have the key in your hand. The key to open the door that leads to all the other offices. You have a lot of things to do. You have to open the door. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do that. But because the key is in your hand, if you don't open that door, nobody else will be able to do any other work. That means the work of opening the door is the key thing is the important thing is a priority because it is when you open that door all the people will be able to come in what do i mean by that take the bible study for example we're going to have the bible study and we know that and then, but we know that the press must preach the outline for us. We know that, but the press cannot preach until the typist has typed. We know that, but the typist cannot type except the outline has been prepared. We know that, and if the outline is prepared, the typist will not know what to do if the outline has not been given to him. A lot of things other people are to do, the typist the secretary and then the one that will lay it on paper as it should be printed and the one that will go and do the filming and the one that will make the plate and the one that will put it on the machine and the one that will roll it out and the one that will cut it and the one that will pack it and the one that will not take the package and take it to the place where it will be used a lot of people but somebody has the key he has to draw the outline write the outline before all the other people will do what they can do if he doesn't write the outline he delays everybody else that's the important job then you ask yourself what is it that holds the key in my hand what am i to do so i can release all the other people who are waiting to get up and do their work and do their beach that's the important assignment you wake up in the day early in the morning and you say what am i to do today what is it if i don't do will hinder other people from doing what they ought to do that's the important assignment for the day not what you like not what is easy but what's important and that's what joshua did and that's what you have to do preparing to possess the promised land we're told in that joshua chapter 3 verse 1 and joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from Shittim. And came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass, after three days, that the officers went through the host. The officers always had the command of Joshua. Always in Joshua was the next step. Joshua was the next step. Joshua, what's the next step? If the officers don't keep close to Joshua, the congregation will not know what to do. They'll just be wasting away. But the officers need to be very close to Joshua and they ought to be saying, what's next? If the, if the national overseers don't keep close to the general superintendent, our people will just be wasting away. What's next? If the state overseers do not keep close to the general superintendent, the people will just be wasting away. But you must keep close. What's next? You see, that's the secret of being able to move in and possess the land. 
And if the, if the sectional leaders don't keep close to the overall leader, the people will just be wasting away. Yes, I understand. They may be having some activities, but are those activities in line what will take us to the destination? That's the question. If you don't keep close to the man on the top, to Joshua, the people will be wasting away. That's the reason why in leadership, the officers are always close. They are always intimate. You don't allow some little, little things to hinder the big vision. That's a big vision. And you don't allow the small, small, small pebbles in your shoe to take all your attention. And the little grain of sand that got into your eyes to take the whole attention. Officers keep close to your joshua and then in verse 3 and they commanded the people saying when you see the ark of the covenant of the lord your god and the priest the levites bearing it then ye shall remove from your place from your place and go after it we'll do it i said we will do it what a great preparation they made number two the privilege of partaking in the promised rest the privilege of partaking in the promised rest let's look at chapter 1 of Joshua verse 12 Joshua chapter 1 verse 12 and the Rubenites and the, Gad the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh speak Joshua unto them speak Joshua saying remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God has given you rest. Mark that word. The Lord your God has given you rest and has given you this land. Your wives, so your little ones, and so your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest. Mark that word again. Until the Lord has given your brethren rest, as he has given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it. Which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. The word rest is what uh, you need to think about here. Uh, Joshua was telling the people, the Lord your God has given you rest. And then he said, pass before your brethren, walk with them, fight with them, not against them, but with them, and fight against the enemy with them and on their behalf, until the Lord, your God, has given your brethren rest. You have rest, and they too, they need to have rest. Join together. Don't be selfish. We have got rest. We have got joy. We have got fulfillment. We have got accomplishment. We have got success. You go and do your own and get what we have got. No. Join together. And as you join together until you'll fight in the battle of the Lord, until your brethren will have rest. Just like you too, you have rest. What kind of rest? Number one, rest from wandering. Rest from wandering. Number two, rest from the wicked. The wicked in the land. Wanting to trouble them, traumatize them, torture them. Kind of destroy them. Rest from the wicked. Number three, rest from war or warfare. Rest from war. Or from warfare. Number four, rest from worry. Rest from worry. Number five, rest from weariness. Rest from weariness. Number six, rest from want. 
Rest from want, from lacking anything. Then number seven, rest from works. Rest from works. We well, were looking at the rest that they wanted to possess. And this will help them to understand, except this rest is there. Then we have not finished. We'll still stay with our brethren and join with our brethren until we have rest. Number one, rest from wandering. In Joshua chapter chapter 1 verse 15. Until the Lord have given your brethren rest as he has given you. And they also are possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the rising. That's rest from wandering. They have been wandering about for 40 years and they had no stable place of possession. But now rest was coming. Rest from wandering number two is rest from the wicked in joshua chapter 21 joshua chapter 21 reading from verse 44 and verse 45 and the lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swear unto their fathers and there stood not a man of all their enemies the enemies the wicked before them the lord delivered all their enemies the wicked into their hand they have failed not aught of any good sin which the lord had spoken unto the house of Israel, all came to pass. All the wicked people running after them, chasing after them, wanting to destroy them, they were all defeated. And now they had rest from the wicked. Think about your people, our people. They need rest from wandering. Rest from wandering. Wandering about from fellowship to fellowship, from assembly to assembly, from church to church, from one convention there on the mountain to another convention in the valley. Give them what they need so they can rest from wandering. And they need rest from the wicked. And it's a fear of the wicked that is making some people to run around. They're looking for prayers there, fasting there, anointing all there, olive oil there, holy water there. They're running about because they're afraid of the wicked. Give them rest from the wicked. Number three, rest from war and rest from warfare. In in ex in a Joshua chapter 14, reading verse 15. Joshua chapter 14, verse 15. And the name of Hebron before was Kajas Abba, which Abba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. You see, that's the rest that Joshua was talking about. Joshua was telling the people, we need rest. And you have got your land of rest on the other side, Jordan. Now team up with the brethren so that the brethren will have, number one, rest from wandering. Number two, rest from the wicked. Number three, rest from war or warfare. Number four, rest from worry, rest from anxiety. That there is nothing that is, uh, you know, tormenting our minds anymore. There is total rest from worry. We're told in Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. I'm reading from verses 9 and 10. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. For ye are not yet come to the rest. And to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. They were in the wilderness at that time. You have not yet come to that rest. And then it says, but when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit. And when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about so that ye dwell in safety. No harassment in your mind. No trouble, no torture, no pressure on your mind anymore. There's total rest from worry. And see, worry kills a lot of people, destroys a lot of people, and raises their blood pressure. And eventually, because of worry, worry, anxiety, anxiety, and you know, they don't have security and safety. But you know, we're to give them rest from worry. 
and you preach to the people lift up their faith encourage them that they have nothing on earth to worry about because god is on their side number five rest from weariness isaiah chapter 28 in isaiah chapter 28 we're reading from verse 12 isaiah chapter 28 verse 12 to whom he said this is the rest wherewith ye may ye may cause the weary to rest rest from weariness this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest the people have been on their journey for 40 years now in their mind when is this going to end we've been doing all these merry-go-round when is this going to stop we've been battling the same scene no water this year no water the other year nothing like this nothing like when is this going to end we're weary of this weary of the journey and now the lord is saying the time of rest has come and it is joshua that will lead them into this rest from weariness number six is rest from want rest from want that he saw the needs of their lives being supplied and then all the wants all the lacks everything are being supplied here is what joshua was to do joshua do you remember the description of the land of canaan is a land flowing with milk and honey and when you lead the people into that land flowing with milk and honey then you are leading them unto the inheritance unto the land that there will be no wants no lack anymore in leviticus chapter 20 verse 24 leviticus chapter 20 verse 24 but i have said unto you ye shall inherit their land and I will give it to you to possess a land that flows with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. And you see what the Lord is telling us here? He says, I'm the Lord your God. I've separated you from the people. And he says, he wants to give rest unto his people. Rest from want. The Lord will be your shepherd. And you will not want you will not lack he will set the table before you in the presence of your enemies and he will he will anoint your head and your cup will run over that means then there will be rest from want and then rest from works works what you hold in hebrews chapter 4 <laughs> hebrews chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 9 Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 9. Here it says in verse 9, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief you see for the children of israel yet moses had a great great ministry think about all the miracles in egypt and the miracles at the red sea and the miracle at the well at the bitter water think of the miracles of water out of the rock and think of the miracle of food that they ate all those 40 years but all those miracles took place in the wilderness it didn't stop their wandering and so you know they still needed another step forward that's what joshua was to do and the lord was telling joshua the time has now come arise and give the people rest and joshua also commanded the people the time has come our own time has come rest from wandering rest from the wicked rest from war or warfare you know that you don't have to say i'm fighting a battle when is that going to end i'm fighting enemies when is that going to end you allow enemies to take a portion of your strength a portion of your energy a portion of your thoughts a portion of your skill 
When is that going to end? Rest from war or warfare. Rest from worry. Nothing bothers your mind. Nothing troubles your mind. No anxiety and no worry. Rest from weariness. Always saying, you know, brethren, I don't know why. I, I stand up, I walk a little, and I'm tired. When will you stop all the weariness? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strays. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will walk. They will not fit. They will run. They will not be weary. Rest from weariness. And then rest from want and rest from works. You know, for us, the Lord has promised us rest. I said the Lord has promised you rest. <laughs> Number one, rest in salvation. Rest in salvation. Number two, rest in your soul, in your spirit. Number three, rest from sorrow, sickness, and slavery. Number four, rest from suffering. You know, some people think that suffering is part of life. And as they face this new year, they say, well, I'm bracing up. I'm tightening on my belt again. I'm buckling up. And I, I will say, why? Uh, they say, well, you know, for my life. I don't want to deceive myself. Suffering is always there. And for this year, they're expecting another portion of suffering from Satan again. It will not be. Yeah. Rest from suffering. Number five, rest in sleep. Rest in sleep. You know, some people sleep, but they don't rest. They fight during the day. They fight during the night. And then they shout in their sleep until they wake up shouting. Somebody has been sleeping, but his body is not at rest. The mind is not at rest. The brain is not at rest. And then he wakes up in the morning. He is as tired in the morning as he was yesterday when he went to bed. But there's rest in sleep. You will rest. The rest, number six, of satisfaction in Christ. Rest of satisfaction in Christ. And then number seven, rest from service. A time comes when... The service is over. Service on earth, over. And now we can go and have the final eternal rest. Number one is rest in salvation. We're told in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 28 and verse 29. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the rest in salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. Rest is salvation. When you come to the Lord and you are born again. And this salvation is there. There is a kind of rest that the Lord gives unto you. Number two, rest in our soul. Rest in our spirit. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. And I am reading from verse 7 116 verse 7 return unto thy rest O my soul return unto thy rest O my soul you know the times when the soul becomes so agitated and so troubled and sometimes it's like the, the soul is almost wanting to fly away from the body. And I'll say, calm down, my soul. There is God is still on the throne. God is in charge. And therefore it says, return, O my soul, to thy rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. Rest in our soul and rest in our spirit. Number three, rest from sorrow, from sickness, from slavery. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 3. Isaiah 14 verse 3. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from sorrow. Your tears will be wiped away. 
all this sorrow in the heart, whatever is making your heart to be sorrowful, the Lord will solve the problem. You need rest. You need rest. You need rest. So you can face the future. So you can do something significant this year. Just rest. Just relax. That the sorrow is gone. The sickness is gone. How can you come to the Mount of Transfiguration here and then still go back home and say, I am still sick. No more sickness. No more sorrow. And the people that kept you in slavery, you know, slavery is even sometimes worse than sickness. The energy is there. The strength is there. The vision is there. The skill is there. But you are tied down. All those fetters are broken. That the Lord promises us rest from sorrow and rest from sickness and rest from slavery. He tells us in that Isaiah chapter 14 verse 3. And it says, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage. Wherein thou was made to serve. Number four, rest from suffering. Rest from suffering. Is it possible that, you know, a day will pass and there's no suffering? A week will pass and there's no suffering? Nothing to torment your mind. Nothing to divert your attention away from the pleasure of fellowship with the Lord to the pain of the suffering in your body. That you're always reminded of the pain is there. Yes, I'm living with pain. I'm living with agony. I'm living with this kind of suffering. I don't know why. And that you almost think you're not thinking of the great commission. You're not thinking of you know the great things you have to do for the Lord. Uh, the pain is, is so loud and the pain is so strong that all you can think about is so oh Lord. Give me some rest. The rest has come. Yeah. We're told in Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Reading from verse 2. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds. And each one walking in his uprightness. And then rest in sleep. This year, your, your sleep will be sweet. Yeah. And when you sleep, you really sleep. By the time you wake up in the morning, then your strength, all your strength has completely come back. And then you're able to run in the race and do the work the Lord has called you to do again. Psalm 127, I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 127, verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. He giveth his beloved sleep. He'll give it to you. And then rest, the rest of satisfaction in Christ. The rest of satisfaction in Christ. Hebrews chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 3. It tells us, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. We do enter into rest, satisfaction in Christ. Now, number seven, rest from service. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. It day comes when you can say like Paul the Apostle, I fought a good fight. I have run the race. I have kept the faith. Now, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord shall give me on that day. And not to me only, but to all them that love is appearing. And then, it's all over. And the Lord says, you've been faithful in a few things. Then you become Lord, ruler, master over many things. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. And I heard 
a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. That they may rest from their labors. This is the time of active service. And this is the time of profitable soul winning. This is the time of uh, fruitful harvesting. Harvesting souls into the kingdom. And then the time comes after you've done everything there is for you to do. And the Lord says, come on in. Faithful servant. You have been faithful in everything I gave you to do. Now you can rest from the service. And it says that ye, says the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. But you see, we have to prepare. That's why Joshua told the officers. That's why the officers told the people. And he said, get ready, prepare. But because now we're moving on into the rest that the Lord has promised his people. You'll be part of this great army. Amen. And now the pledge of passing over with God's people. The pledge. The promise. The commitment. The consecration. The giving of themselves. Saying, yes, we'll work together. Yes, we'll do it. The pledge of passing over with God's people. In Joshua chapter 1, we're reading from verse 16. And he answered Joshua saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. All that thou commandest us, we will do. Show me any army. That is going to win any battle. The subordinates must say to the leader, to the captain, All that thou commandest us, we will do. Show me any team of people walking under a leader. If that team is going to do something, going to go places, and going to achieve, there must be this commitment. All that thou commandest us to do, we will do. Show me any country. That has this great vision. <laughs> you wonder in our country here. And also at least in other countries. Here is Nigeria. And in our country here we add uh, what they call the 2010 and later 2020 vision. You know the old president is gone now. He got some people together. He said, what will this country be 2010, 2015, 2020? And then where should we get to? Where are we going? What are we going to be? And the country here, they were looking at the model of, you know, countries like Singapore, like Malaysia, like these great, great countries. That these countries, they were poor before. These countries, their accounts did not balance some years. The economy was down. Not China. Taiwan, all those, they were looking at them and then Nigeria woke up one day and said, we must get somewhere. We must not remain in this mess. We're going, we're going to, and they, they raised up that committee and they did all the study and they did everything and they put everything down and they gave to the head of state at that time, not, not this one. And then at that time they said, yes, we're going there. But you cannot get there if the, if the officers and the people, if they do not say in that verse 16, all that thou commandest us to do, we will do. Eventually, that one is gone. Now we have a new head of state. And a new head of state set up this and set up this and set up that. You know the story. You read in the papers. Now the, 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 there is enough a vision. 2020. 2020. This is Nigeria, the most populous black country. And it should be a giant for every black man, uh, for every, you know, when you count five, 
black people in Nigeria should be number one. That means in Nigeria should be one. That means 20% of all the black people in the world is Nigerian. And therefore they said, we are a giant. Let's move on. And you know, they are still talking now about 2020, 2020, 2020. This is where we're going. Is Nigeria getting there? Impeachment will not allow us. <laughs> impeach this one, impeach that one. Almost every governor is fighting with his deputy. And then the president, with the vice president, you read it now. Our energy is sinking away. In this country, the Senate, with the president, and the court of appeal, our strength, billions of naira wasted on this or that or that. And this is 2007. 2020 will soon come and accept, will stop all this impeachment process and the fighting and the struggling. And then the officers can say to the Joshua, Everything that you command us to do, we will do. Let's leave, let's leave all that alone. Country, continent, or the world. Let's leave them alone. Let's come to our church. If we're going to reach where we're going to reach, if the goal is what we're aiming at, then all the officers must say, you know, in their mind, with their heart, with seriousness, with commitment, with all sincerity, all the officers must be able to say to the leader, to your general superintendent, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And you say that with all your heart. And there will be no discussion. I know there is none. I said I know there is none. But you know we have to say it before it comes up. There will be no discussion in the hostel of impeaching the general's repentant. <laughs> and then the officers will not be saying, what do you think? Where do you stand? Do you agree with everything? And then we're looking, for, why don't we set up a committee to impeach the church secretary? <laughs> if we cannot grab the, you know, the general superintendent about the church secretary, impeach him. Make life hard for him to run. How about our goal now? How about our vision? How about our dream? How about the calling of God upon this church? How about what the Lord raised us for? To be a light, a beacon of light to this nation. And you know, all over this nation, everybody looks at deeper life. They say, this is the hope of this nation. I mean, in Christianity, teaching the doctrine, living the life, showing the example, preparing a model for the people. They said, this is the hope. And if we impeach our leader or his, uh, or his uh, secretary or we impeach any of these any of these state overseers and some people get together, let's get them out of that seat. If there is no commitment, if there's no, if there's no binding of our hearts together, how are we going to get where we're going? What is important to you? Is this little, little discussion and little rebellion and little disobedience? Or is the goal of where we're going, is that the most important to you? If that's the most important thing to you, then it says, All that thou commandest us, we will do. We will do it. And whithersoever thou sentest us, we will go. That's the strength of the team. When Joshua can call any of the people and say, go and do this. And you'll soon find out in chapter 2. 
Because they had said, where thou sentest us, we will go. He selected two of them. He said, go to Jericho. And when they got to Jericho, you read the story later. The king of Jericho came running after them. It was a dangerous territory. But they went. Because they had committed themselves to it. Whithersoever thou sentest us, we will go. According, according as we hearken unto Moses in all things. So will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee. As he was with Moses. What an encouragement they gave him. You'll be an encouragement to the pastor. You'll be an encouragement to your general superintendent. And you know do something that the general superintendent will say. Why is he running around? Going to all these crusades. And going to all these programs. Why is he laboring so hard? Be an encouragement. And then influence other people too to be an encouragement. Lift up his hand. And lift up the vision. And stop thinking about the small, small things of your personal need. But you lift up the hand of your Joshua. You don't have another Joshua. And thank God the Lord is keeping your Joshua for you. And we're going to move into the land together in Jesus' name. In verse 18, whosoever he be that, do, that does rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Well, what they were saying is, will not give any support to anybody that will rebel. Will not clap our hands for the people that show open rebellion to you, Joshua. Because we need you to lead us into the land. If you have the same mind with us. If you have the same goal with us. If you have the same vision with us. If you want to get to that same promised land to the rest. And if you believe this is the leader the Lord has appointed for us to take us into the land. If you find anybody pulling us down. Dragging us down. Distracting our attention. And wanting us to get tired and to give up. And not to do what we are called to do. If you find any anybody like that you'll not encourage them you silence them you regard them as they are dead as they are dead would and you're not reckon with them that's what the people said the people said we support you so much and we agree with the vision the Lord has given you. And if anybody rebels against your leadership well count him as dead and then they said only be strong and of a good courage. Only be strong. Their joy is in the courage of their leader. Their joy is not to make their leader afraid. To intimidate their leader. And to make him weak. Hands down. Shoulders down. Looking down. And then Joshua says, I don't know what I'm going to do again. And then the officers will say, wonderful we got him we crushed him we conquered him no their goal was not to conquer their leader their goal was to lift their leader up so that their leader will lead them into the battle and then they with their leader they'll conquer the enemy we're going to conquer the enemy only be that strong and very courageous. We're going to do that together. The Lord has shown us today what it takes for us to get into the land. And thank God we're moving there. And we're going to get there together. This year will be a year of service. It will be a year of conquering. It will be a year of preaching. It will be a year of winning souls into the kingdom of God. You and I, we're going to bind our hearts together. We're moving there. And we're moving on. This church will accomplish much for the Lord. In this generation in Jesus name. You are part of the team. Rise up and commit your obedience to the Lord. And commit your heart to the Lord. And say Lord I'm going to be part of the team. We're reaching there. We're getting there. We're going there. And we're going to accomplish. We're going to be what the Lord has appointed that we're going to be. You're ready. You're willing. You accept. You want to do everything the Lord has given us to do. We'll do it together. Joshua commanded the officers. 
Don't be negative to commands. Accept command. We're an army. We're soldiers of Christ. Accept. Believe. Move on. We need to serve. We need to work. Like he promptly obeyed the Lord, you want to promptly obey the Lord. His instructions and his orders were instructive. Inspirational. Be an inspiration. Be an inspiration. Be an inspiration, an encouragement, a motivational force for the people of God. Lead the people to rest. Rest from wandering. So teach your people. So feed your people. So counsel your people. So minister to your people that they'll not be wandering here and there. Minister in such a way they enter into rest. Rest from wandering. Rest from the wicked. Rest from war and warfare. Rest from worry, from anxiety. Rest from weariness. Lead our people to rest. But she must enter into that rest yourself. You're not weary anymore. You're not tired anymore. There's this supernatural spiritual energy in you. Rest from want. Rest from works. Rest in salvation. What a wonderful rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest in salvation. Rest in your soul. Oh, my soul, get into the rest of the Lord. Rest from sorrow. No more sorrow. No more sickness. No more slavery. Rest. Rest from suffering. A new year has come. A new time has come. A new privilege has come. A new opportunity has come. We can rest. Rest in sleep. The rest of satisfaction in Christ. And then if you finish victoriously. Triumphantly. And you become part of the militant eventually triumphant church. Then you rest from service. And now a pledge. The pledge of consecration. The pledge of commitment. All that thou commandest us to do, we will do. And we that so ever thou sentest us, we will go. That's a pledge. That's a consecration. That's a commitment. Join hands with your Joshua. The unity is more important than your independence. Join hands with your Joshua. Have the same heart. The same mind. The same vision. The same desire. The same aspiration, the same ambition. What's your Joshua? Join hands together. What's your Joshua? Your general superintendent, your pastor. That's more important than your independence. And whatsoever thou sayest, we will do. 
only be that strong and very courageous. So we can all go together and achieve what we need to achieve. The goal that is set before us. And let's lead the people of God to real experience in the land of Canaan. In Jesus' name we pray. I know you can do better than that. God bless every one of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time again. Thank you, Lord, because of the preparation and the readiness to move in and to possess the land of promise. Lord, make us ready. Whatever will hinder our preparation and readiness, take it away from us in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, all the gifts we need, all the seriousness, all the dedication that we need, grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you'll assist us. You lift up our hands together and you make us a formidable team that cannot be defeated in Jesus' name. You've given us the word, you've given us the doctrine and the life. We pray, Lord, we'll take this light, this salt, this message, this doctrine, and this vision, this gospel, take it to the world, waiting for us in Jesus' name. We will not fail. We will not fall. We will not be defeated. We're all united, Lord, and in unity we're going to stand in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you mend all the cracks in our ranks. That you mend all the divisions that may be in our ranks. That you mend all the differences of opinion. Different direction. Going different direction. Thinking of different things. And thinking of different objectives and different goals. Take all that away from us in Jesus name. We pray, Lord, with one mind, one heart, one soul, one spirit, and then with one force, one energy, as we bind ourselves together to serve you, we will succeed in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.